Welcome to the daily update. This is being prepared after Friday's session on August 5th, and we'll see how things look in the market today. And then we'll also look to see how things look for Monday, August 8th. And we had a down day. The employment situation report that came in was much, much stronger than expected. And I'll go through that here in just a moment. We saw the bond market really go down, which means interest rates went up. The futures were heavily down. We had a gap lower open, but then we spent a lot of the day recovering. Now we bounced around. It didn't go straight up, straight down, but it wasn't all that negative. We didn't see a lot of real thrust behind the selling. So we continue to work off this short-term overbought situation. The technicals are still holding up for the most part. And even though we took a bit of a hit with our scenarios, they're still holding up as well. So it's kind of the day when we saw things go down, but it wasn't really intense. Now, that could always change going forward, but we can only analyze what's happening right here and right now. So let's go back and talk about what happened. The futures, they were kind of waiting in anticipation before the employment report came out. They came out, they immediately shot lower. So then at the open, we did have a gap lower down, right down, poof, down to S2 at 41.24. Prices then rebounded and came all the way back up to the unchanged level and that filled the gap. And that's when you really have to watch things because we gap down, go back up, fill that gap from yesterday's close. And then a lot of times at the unchanged level, that's where a decision is made. Are we going to break on through and then go positive? Or are we going to turn back around and go lower? And that's what it looked like it was going to do. But the selling just kind of fizzled out. After that, prices then declined back down below S2 and made a new daily low. And it looked like, okay, here we go. But I was watching things really closely and it, the dollar was, it was actually up and bond prices were overreacting. The NASDAQ was still hanging in there okay. The Dow was hanging in there. So it didn't look like there was a, an across the board attempt made at selling. And that's ultimately what happened. Prices then ended or they rebounded, but did not reach back up to the unchanged level. They almost got back up there. And then we chopped as the day went on within the daily range. And buying then brought prices almost back to the unchanged level. We almost got back there. We ended up being down 0.16%, which is not all that big of a move to consider the roller coaster ride that we went on during the session. Volume was below average. So you saw people really back off on that. And the technicals are still hanging in there. They're still positive, And I'll go through some things. Inflation and interest rates and growth concerns. That's what the market's fixated on. We have all of the different geopolitical concerns. Earnings as they're coming out, some are positive, some are negative. And then the recession fears or whatever the definition is right now. So what are some comments that we can make? The report came out much stronger than expected. Growth stocks really underperformed, even when we started to recover. They just didn't have a very good day. But the small caps and the mid caps, they actually closed up on the session. Interest rates really skyrocketed up. And now that's kind of throwing this inflation has topped scenario. All right, is that still going to be that way? The big holdout in this whole scenario has been employment and that are we going to start to see some weakness to confirm that, okay, maybe we are going into a recession? Well, when this report came out very strong, now we don't know if this scenario is going to keep playing out. We'll need to see what, in, what kind of economic reports come out and do they seem to consider inflation as topping or still going higher? The sector rotation, it, it, is still advancing overall because it's above the moving average, but we did see a bit of a decline. The 10 to the two and the 10 to the five, they're still inverted. Fear, we're right at neutral right now. Even though we had a down roller coaster day, the fear and greed indicator ticked over it and it's right at 50 right now. And that's as neutral as you can get. Oil actually dropped below 90. And we had the employment situation report that I have another slide prepared for. 
We also received consumer credit and it increased by 40.1 billion. That was a lot more than what happened last month when it increased by 23.8 billion. Our trend is still positive overall because the ADX is above 20 and the green line is above the ADX. I've switched our bias to mix to positive because we kind of saw two down days in a row, even though they were rather minuscule on a closing basis. But we just kind of want to be aware of that. But our momentum, I'm still keeping as positive for right now. Here is what came out in the report. They expected 250,000 new jobs. It came in at more than double that at 528,000. And then the private payrolls was also almost, well, more than double. They expected it to be 200,000. It came in at 471,000. The average hourly earnings, they expected it to be at 0.3% and it was at half a percent. So all of these are much higher than expected. The unemployment rate, which is, you know, sounds good on the surface, but the markets don't really pay attention to that, but it actually decreased. It dropped down to three and a half percent. And the average work week, they expected it to be at 34.5. It was actually at 34.6. So that actually ticked up. So this is suggesting that employment is still growing, that things might not be as bad as what our other economic reports are telling us. So we're seeing kind of a disconnect now. We want to keep an eye on this employment. And then all the other reports that continue to come out and see, do they start to meet each other at some point? And I sure notice that I say at some point an awful lot. So here's sentiment, 50. Right now, we're kind of really up at the neutral stage. Here's an Isabel net chart. This just shows that the equities future positioning, this came down to a real low. And then we've been bouncing up off of that. And you can see when we ran into some trouble back in 2015 and 16, this was a really low reading. Here was the Christmas Eve mini crash. Here's the COVID plunge. So we're kind of coming down to territory that we've reached before. And we've hit even lower than this in the past. But the fact that we're turning around and going up could be positive. Then this just shows the jobless claims. This is based on what came out on Thursday, where we had this dark blue line in it kind of shot up and then we went over that hump and now we're starting to come back down as far as the overall initial jobless claims. This is just showing sector fund flows. Now I show a chart of the performance of the sectors and I go through that today and I do it every day. This just shows what money is going in to the sectors and this goes back a year where in the performance charts that I show, I just go back to the all time high in the S&P 500. But it just shows most money is still going into tech. Then you have healthcare, energy, real estate, consumer goods, utilities. And then at the very bottom, that's what they're highlighting here, is the financials. And that's this purple line at the very bottom. These would be banks and things that you would think might do better as interest rates are going up. But we're just not seeing the performance and we're not seeing a lot of money going into that sector. This is mainly a historical chart. You might want to pause this and just look at this. I could, I could spend an hour, maybe two hours, going through all the things that have happened in this chart. This just kind of gives you a historical perspective of things that have happened in the past and then where we're at right now, way over on the right-hand side. That's all I'm going to say about that chart. I feel like Forrest Gump there. Then this is also talking about the initial unemployment claims versus government bonds and stocks. So it's taking a, a relative measure with like a ratio that we do. And it came down and now it's starting to turn back up. Okay, so does that mean that the employment market is starting to show some weakness? Well, then we had the employment situation report come out and that says, no, that's not what's happening. But this is telling a slightly different story when it comes to the weekly claims that people file. We had our active asset manager reading come out and we're up into the 55s. We're still kind of in the neutral territory right now. When we get above 60, 70, 80, that's when we start to get a little topsy with this particular indicator. Here's looking at the sectors. Value was actually up on the day. Growth was down more than half a percent, but all of the other sectors, whether growth or value in the mid and small caps, they ended up putting in a gain for the day. 
Here's the VIX, which declined both with the line chart and the bar chart. Here's the VIX of the VIX, just kind of starting to go sideways now. And we're seeing a, still a bit of a drop off of people getting out of the bearish funds, the right X mutual funds, and getting more into the bullish funds. But it's still pretty much in the middle right now. And I don't know why this freezes up sometimes. Here's the daily ulcer index, which measures fear. That's not helping us where we kind of went sideways with the weekly chart right here, the mass index, this is generating a valid signal right now. And it appears that it is an upward move based on other charts. We're down 13.98% from the all time high equity put call ratio turned and actually went back up slightly, but we're bouncing around kind of crazy. The five period still continues to decline. Here's the pivot levels for Monday's session. And I'm trying to hit the correct arrow button. We didn't really change all that much when we come to the resistance levels and the support levels, even though we did drop down. This, this is actually kind of a healthy looking bar to open down so far and then the close, that's the little tick on the right hand side, which is probably really hard to see. That's actually pretty positive even though it was a roller coaster getting there. And then volume really dropped off at the bottom. Here's the pivot points for the month of August, all the different ways that they are calculated. The FIB levels, nothing was really decided. We still wanna break above, first of all, this conglomeration of prices that we saw back in June. That we never did exceed that. And that was our two and Thursday session. Actually it was Wednesday session. That's the first level that we want to be able to break above that. Then we have a lot of other resistance above where we're at right now. These, whoops. Okay, I guess I have these. All right, never mind. Okay, Dis discretionary ended up being down the most. It's actually been rebounding a bit, followed by communication, which is in dead last place right now. And the energy sector, which has just gotten hammered. Over the last couple of days, well, it was up almost 2% in Friday's session. Here's the scooter score, just showing utilities, energy. They're now back into the 90 areas where we have poor old communication just keeps going lower and lower. It's at 5.7. This is the sector performance chart that I show going back to the all-time high. Here's energy and utilities with all of the rest of the sectors being negative. And communication is pretty decidedly in last place now, as discretionary has been seen, been seeing a little bit more love these days. This is the measure of the index is going back to the all-time high. Nothing has really changed here. The percentages change every day, but the chart is really not changing. We didn't have any technical alerts. Nothing was generated in Friday's session. So let's go back and talk about what happened. After the report came out, the futures tanked. We ended up opening down at S2, but then immediately saw buying coming into that, came back up to the unchanged level, kind of figured out, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? Well, we went down again right here, and then we kind of tested the low, so to speak, and then came back up off of that. We never got back up to the pivot or to the unchanged level, came back down. And if things were going to turn negative, in my opinion, this is when it would happen. After we saw the two bounces up and then a failure, that looked like we were gonna get set to go lower, but that's not what happened. We came back down just above S2 and then saw some nice buying going into the close. And so we ended up just being down 0.16%. Our trend, the ADX is rolling over a little bit because of the two down days in a row, but it's still positive overall and above 20. The Arun, it's flat from Thursday to Friday's reading. Breath turned up a little bit. And that's kind of the interesting thing here. A little bit of an advance based on price, but a decline based on volume. Advanced decline ratio also declining just a touch, not very much. New highs, new lows starting to look a little better with our moving averages. They're flat with the 10, but the five is starting to advance. If we can break above that, conglomeration of prices right up in this range where I have the cursor circling around, you would probably see a whole lot of new highs being generated at that point. Accumulation distribution also advanced on a down day. Hmm. Here's our moving average tree. We're still playing around with the 
pretty much the 100 period moving average. And Stoke RSI still looking extreme, as is the Williams for Senar. They're still both extreme positive. The force index declined slightly. The Swinland trading oscillator, this again is still a little bit of a concern. We are seeing it decline. McClellan oscillator also declined a little bit, but is still positive. The 20 period exponential moving average actually turned up slightly where the 50 and the 200 were pretty much flat. Stochastic still looking overbought at this point on all the different stochastic measurements that I show. Here's the 100 period moving average. We're still above both the exponential and simple moving averages. The Sean trend meter was flat. We didn't really decide anything on the Fibonacci retracement. We're kind of right at this level right now. This is at 41.38, where we closed at 41.45. So in terms of being close to these levels, we're kind of right there. PMO, still looking positive. PMOs that are rising was flat, rolling over with the buy signals and still advancing with those that are above zero. The Sean, or excuse me, the Chaikin oscillator turned up slightly. And so did the chicken money flow, saw a little bit of an improvement. It's seeing this bar, it's seeing the much lower open and then how we closed much closer to yesterday's close. And these kind of indicators pick that up. Volume really dropped off because we're below average. The vortex still positive overall, and we're coming back up off of an extreme reading with the cell side of the, that indicator. The summation index based on price and volume, still positive. All of our oscillators continue to be positive. The BPI is still positive. Ease of movement declined a little bit, but it's still above zero. I don't know why this is hanging as I advance this. Ultimate oscillator right at the 70 level. Here's our rainbow. We're still up on the upper side of the rainbow currently. That's the intermediate term rainbow. Saw a bit of a decline with the money flow. TTM squeeze, still looking positive overall. Our different charts, we, we're seeing a bit of a hammer here. Kind of the hammer's right in the middle. You could almost call that a doji. But overall, this chart is still looking positive. The, there we go. The Kegi is still positive. The Renko is still positive. The three line break is still positive. Nothing new with the point and figure chart, but it's still looking positive. The Elder is switched back to neutral with both the SPX and the SPY. SAR continues to be positive. Go, no, go, still positive. Some longer term charts. Here we have the longer term rainbow and we're still right in about the middle. And not much of a change with our longer term moving average studies. Special case still turning up ever so slightly. Looking at the broad market, the diamonds are neutral. Here's the Dow where we've been pretty much chopping sideways. It was up almost a quarter of a percent on lower volume. The Qs, they're back to neutral now. And they were down a little bit more, 0.78%. And the Vixen still declined though, even on a down day where the NASDAQ, it was down about a half a percent. So little profit taking, little going back to the old scenario type of thing for right now. The mid caps, they were up a little over a half a percent. And I'll show you the small caps later. We had the Wilshire pretty much unchanged on the day. Some other measures, the dollar came back 0.88%. And here's the relationship where we're seeing the S&P, which has been going higher. Now we're seeing the dollar going up. So it still has an inverse relationship, but it was not as, it's not as strong now as it has been. Gold, which had been climbing over the last few days, it declined over a percent. Silver was down over one and a half percent. Oil down below 90, kind of cool. I don't have it in this video, but in the intermarket analysis video, gas, the gas futures have really come down. So that might really help everybody a little bit with gas prices. Here's the correlation where we're starting to see them going in opposite directions. If the S&P is going up, oil is going down and vice versa. Then bonds. After coming up out of a base right here, we did give some back. And here's the world bond index down one and a quarter percent. 
And then with our yields, we still have the 10 to the five that's negative and the 10 to the two being negative. We're watching the 10 to the three month. It came almost down to being inverted and then it has now bounced back up slightly. Then the tech to the 10 year, it had a pretty strong inverse relationship, but that's starting to wear off now. The yields really spiked up pretty much across the board with the treasury yields. Here's our scenarios, still holding up okay with the 200 day simple moving average. Then when we look at the 50, holding up with the S&P, the mid caps and the small caps, those new highs and new lows, looking at a 10 period moving average, that trigger is, or I should say setup, is still looking positive. The equity put call ratio, still holding up. Small cap index, they were up almost half a percent on the day, even though we're kind of chopping sideways overall. Here's the ratio where we bounced back up slightly. Thursday was a bad day for small caps. They showed much improvement on Friday. Here's the ratio with the small caps, I think, where it's starting to spike up a little bit now. Can that give some, some, more, some more support to the S&P? Here's the S&P with the 10-year yield. Also, it had been stronger on an inverse relationship, but it's wearing off slightly. Copic curve still generating a signal. Here's our sector rotation. Saw a bit of a decline with the Qs, discretionary and large cap growth against value, but still above the moving average. And the moving averages are all going up. Here are the large, mid, and small caps. Also still hanging in there for right now. The spike in the treasury yield, yeah, this is getting pretty close. If the two-year keeps going up, we might take this spike out. But the staples, they were down almost a quarter of a percent, and we continue to fall. So this is still looking like a valid spike. So what's our outlook then for Monday? We're still positive overall, and we're kind of working off that short-term overbought condition. Sentiment is improving, and it's now switched back to neutral. We don't have any economic reports coming out on Monday. The whole list of geopolitical events. The big one for the markets is inflation and interest rates. But be prepared because any one of these that are listed right here, they can always become the main thing that the markets focus on at any time. So what are our scenarios? The same things that I just mentioned but and the technicals are positive and working off that short-term overbought signal. And you'd want to be careful if you're getting short the market right now. The action that we saw on Friday was quite positive. To come all the way down looked like we had a lot of justification to go lower, but we didn't. We ended up bouncing up off of that a couple of times. And so that made the price action a lot more positive. So we are in an up scenario right now. You still have a lot of folks that don't really believe things are going to go up. You have this FOMO, the fear of missing out. That's not really playing the last couple of days, but if we have a strong up day, then you could see that really come back. So we have a lot of positive setups that are hanging on right now. Our sector rotation is still holding up and our scenarios are holding up. The technicals are improving. We're still above the 100 period moving average. We have some pivots to deal with either as support or resistance as well as FIB retracements. And then we might wanna keep an eye on previous levels as either support or resistance. We're not neutral right now with the ADX above 20 and it is positive with the green line on top. So our conclusion then, the S&P is positive and it's still holding up overall, short-term positive and still slightly overbought. Intermediate term, it's still pretty positive. Long-term, still negative. So thank you. Have a wonderful weekend. I will prepare the weekly video soon over the weekend as well as the intermarket analysis video. I do the weekly video next, and then it might be a little bit later, which would be Sunday evening before I get to the intermarket analysis video. I've got some family things happening over the weekend, so I don't have a lot of extra time right now. So I might be a little delayed with publishing those videos. Have a great weekend, and I'll talk to you on the daily video after Monday's session.